we see there is need for us to use words rightly. Glory to Jesus. James chapter 3. It's a very lengthy verse, a lengthy passage. We'll see what we can do about this. But we need to read it using words rightly. Hallelujah. James chapter 3 from verse 1. It says, my brethren, so speaking to believers, my brethren, talking to believers, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive greater condemnation. Leaders, masters, they are leaders, teachers of God's word, say they are under stricter uh, standards. More is required of them. And so more, more is given to them. And so more is required of them. So he said, don't struggle to be leaders. Don't struggle to be a teacher. Many masters. But let's go to verse 2. So for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle his whole body. I want to pay attention to this. <laughs> it says, you are a perfect man, perfect woman, that is a matured man or woman. If you don't offend people with words, Oh, one would think that is a man that when he throws his suit this way, one million people fall to the ground. That is the one that the Bible teaches is matured. Those things are good. I operate in the supernatural. I do. Right from secondary school. But the sign of maturity is not in the talents you have or the spiritual gift you manifest, but rather it is in your ability to relate with people properly. No matter how much spiritual gifts you manifest, you are still immature if you cannot relate properly with people. It is a sign of immaturity. Hallelujah. And let me say this also, so I don't mistake this. Spiritual authority does not also determine your spiritual maturity. Somebody could be in a place of spiritual authority where he is not spiritually matured. So as believers, we respect people who are above us spiritually. We expect it to be more matured. But we know that not everybody that is in spiritual authority is spiritually matured. We respect them for their authority, but we don't live our lives the way they live their lives. That is why Jesus Christ told the disciples, the Jews, he says, they, for the Pharisees, he said they should listen to the Pharisees. They should obey the Pharisees because they sit on the seat of Moses. They are in a place of spiritual authority. Say, but don't do what they do. Hallelujah. Many Christians don't know this. And so, they feel, oh, this man is, is my spiritual father. This man has spiritual authority over me. And then they are living his life. All they need to do is to obey him, submit to his authority. They live their lives in accordance to the scriptures. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And so he said, if you don't offend with words, he said, then you are a matured person, a matured believer. He said, at the same time, you are able to predo your tongue and put your body in control. Praise the Lord Jesus. 
Amen. You are not to breathe oh, the whole body. A brido is an object they put in the mouth of horses, donkeys, and maybe camels in order to control them. With that brido in their mouth, they're under control. So he's saying that the picture he's painting is this if you use your words rightly, you put your life under control you put your life in the right direction but if you don't use your mouth rightly that is you're using your mouth wrongly there's no breed in your mouth then your life will go anyhow no direction hallelujah praise the lord jesus verse three said behold we put bits in horses mouth that they obey us, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the sheep, that the sheep in the seed, vessels in the seed, which though they be so great and are driven by fierce wind, yet they are turned about with a very small hem. Wheresoever the governor listed. Right now they are making massive boats or ship in the high sea some that can take things of thousands of people shall you enter some of those boats is like you are in a city people are paying several thousands of dollars to cruise on those boats but go to where it is being controlled just two buttons just one small rudder you turn it the boat moves turns to whatever direction you choose. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. So he said in verse 5, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindle it. Now I want you to pay attention on this teaching because it's going to help you. He said the tongue is like the bits you put in the mouth of horses so that you can turn them about to your he said it's like that small rudder or that hem in, in, the, in the boat, in the mighty ship in the sea. That is what your tongue is like. And it tells us the power of the tongue here. He said, behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled it. Great matter is kindled by your tongue. Hallelujah. Great matter, listen, great matter is kindled, ignited by your tongue. And this great matter could be positive or negative. Your tongue is a little member in your body, but it's the one determining the outcomes of your life. It's the one that is determining the results you're having in life. No matter how hardworking a man is, if the man keeps cursing himself, Causing his job, that man would never prosper. No matter the olive oil they pour on his head, no matter the, and the, the hand that is laid on him, if he keeps speaking death, he can never prosper. So, what are you saying? The circumstances are painting pictures of death in your business, and you are speaking that your business have died. I don't know what is happening to this business self. I don't even know. I have done this. I have done that. Nothing seems to be working. No, something is working. Hallelujah. Something is working. Amen. Because he perfects that which concerns you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so it tells us here, I don't want to deviate from what we are teaching here from James. James tells us here that your little tongue is the one that sets your life on fire. Your little tongue. 